All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me touching on the top prop bets in the NBA Summer League today. But first, just a quick recap from yesterday. So I do think it is important to call out that yesterday was a very annoying day. It was a profitable day, which was good. Like, we're not complaining about that. But it was annoying because you look at the prize picks by the day. We had two players that were DNPs. You look at the underdog slip. Those two players were DNPs. And if you guys watched yesterday's video, you know that the underdog by the day was a middling opportunity with pick six. And so I messaged the Discord chat saying, all right, these two players are actually out. These two players are DNPs. We need to find replacement bets on pick six, which is kind of the tough part about pick six. At the same time, if you guys are someone that is playing on pick six, be around by lineup lock or around lineup lock on pick six because there were so many lineups yesterday that were dead because they played someone that was a dnp and two slip three slip four slip bets all paid out better way better than they were expected to and the way you can do that is literally just set an alarm 10 minutes before the game before each game if you guys want to do that and then just check that team's twitter account most of them have been pretty good about posting the starting lineup so i did want to make that clear about pick six because it is a decent edge that we get but it's also time consuming as well. If you guys are going to be profitable with that. Uh, but looking at today's slate, we got the Pacers for uh, versus the Denver num Nuggets kicking off this slate. It is a five point spread. 176 is going to be the over and under here for this team. The only players that we are getting lines on today are Walker and Furphy. What you will notice is that Ben Shepard has not been playing or did not play in the last game. And so because of that Furphy, Walker, and even Freeman, they all got a lot of minutes. And so that is something we do need to watch for because Walker is someone that I do think could potentially see his usage drop with Shepard on the court at the same time. That's not what happened last game, which is a little bit strange, I would say. It's kind of crazy, guys. He managed 19 points on seven shot attempts, which is a little bit crazy. Obviously, a lot of free throws there. He is someone that in two games has gotten him five plus free throws, which is always nice there. A little bit too many turnovers for him, but he's been playing a lot, shooting a lot as well. Now we look at the lines that we're getting for him. He's about a 50-50 split to get over 20 points today. And he's minus one, sorry, he's minus 200 to get over six rebounds. And so right there, just with points and rebounds, DraftKings Sportsbook lines, which we are getting today, is telling us that he should be able to get his over PRA, assuming that he still gets a few assists in this game. And he has been handling the basketball a decent amount. So you would kind of assume that he'd be able to do that. So I don't mind his over PRA. Like if you guys are searching for a bet in that first game, that'd be one I'd be fine with. But at the same time, I don't feel like we need to make that. And then prize picks is getting us a line for Furphy at 16 and a half, which that line does seem to be pretty good. I, I don't really think we're getting a big edge there. If we had to choose, we would be choosing the over. But again, we don't have to. He is someone that has been playing heavy minutes, has been getting double digit shot attempts up as well. You can see the last two games, 18 points for him, issuing the three ball a lot. And so he his game kind of comes and goes with the three ball he's some that would be like a better dfs play than he is like uh betting on for props best purposes for what it's worth if we do get like a pra prop from i might not mind it like if his pra prop comes at like 22 and a half i'd be happy to bet the over or even 23 and a half i'd be more inclined to do that but we're just not getting those prop bets for him it's just points right now and so we jump into the denver nuggets here the only player that we are getting props on currently is hunter tyson and we're going to see in the last game he did end up playing 31 minutes a lot of that was kind of due to straw third not playing i shouldn't say a lot of it like he had a good game for sure 20 points uh 18 shot attempts like shot the basketball a bunch um but drew and straw third was out who i think most people would say is the best g league player right now for the denver nuggets that being said it does seem like he's going to be shut down that's what the reports are saying is that he's shut down for the rest of the summer league because they're 0 for 3 it doesn't really make sense for him to get minutes so with that i do wonder if someone like hunter tyson is going to continue to get that much run i think it makes sense for him to get that much run we see one bad game mixing there for him where he had five points obviously don't like that at the same time i don't feel like we need to be making this bet that's another one that you know it probably just feels like we're forcing it so let's go ahead and jump on into the next game and the next game that we have is going to be the Grizzlies versus the Pelicans. I want you guys to notice the the nine point difference there. This is something that has increased from I think like I know at least six and a half to start the day. Now it's all the way up to nine. Okay, it is a very high game total, so we probably do want to be attacking it a little bit. But we know with Memphis, the thing we got to figure out is is Zach Ed playing? And yesterday was the front end of back to back. This is the second end of a back to back. I don't think it really makes sense for Gigi Jackson to play tonight. They didn't play Jake Labrevia last night, and I think that's probably why. They wanted one of those players to play. They chose to sit Larivia yesterday. I think they could choose to play Gigi Jackson or sit Gigi Jackson today and play Larivia. At the same time, we don't know what's going on with Zach Eady as well. We need to really know if he's going to play or not because that really does help out the other big 
in that scenario. Scottie Pippen Jr. did finally have himself a good game as well. I should point that out. He was someone who I mentioned in yesterday's video. I was like, it's a little bit surprising that he hasn't been more dominant. It's not like he's been bad, but it's surprising that he hasn't been more dominant, a little bit more aggressive. We did see him be more aggressive. And he also got 31 minutes. And so it does seem like they are potentially trying to win. I mean, they're 3-0 in the G League. Might as well keep going for it. Uh, G League Summer League, so might as well go for the, the title if they can. And so let's go ahead and start out with the lines that we're getting for Gigi Jackson. And again, if he does play, I think we are getting some pretty big edges here for Jackson. We see his line uh, on underdog is 20 points. If you look at DraftKings Sportsbook, they have his over and under, or well, his over line set at minus 320 to get over 20 points. Again, just as an FYI, we saw uh, on Monday that the DraftKings lines were severely wrong. We were not getting an edge there. It seemed like we were getting a pretty big edge. Now that was an outlier night as we have come to see, but that is still something to note. And the reason why the DraftKings line can potentially be wrong is because they're not giving us unders. But at the same time, if we're getting a guy minus 300 to get over 20 points, DraftKings really wouldn't be giving us that line if they, <laughs> they're basically telling people they don't want them to bet on Gigi Jackson because he's likely to get over 20 points. And if we look at Gigi Jackson, it was a little bit surprising that he had not uh, kind of been as, as dominant. Uh, they had a couple of other games in here as well, but 17 points now, 23 points, 27 points. Again, that is a little bit rooted in whether Edie and LaRivia play. Uh, and Gigi Jackson does have the chance to sit as well, but either way, we're getting ads here. And again, guys, I do want to point out the line that we are getting on pick six. Now, the nice thing about maybe potentially using these early ones is that once we get confirmation that they're playing, like they're in, we're good to go. There's a little bit less of a grind in chasing later games. So what I mean by that is yesterday had you done an early prop bet and maybe done one high, one low, and then set yourself up to basically cash a slip, you would have guaranteed yourself profit simply because of all the DNPs. And there is that risk of DNPs. And so if you're just locking in the early game with the correct prop bet, you could potentially be setting yourself up for success. I don't really want to encourage that because there are some days where it's extremely chalky on pick six, where it only pays out 2x in some cases, 3x for three slip bets. And so there is that concern as well. But we can see right here, Gigi Jackson over 19 points on pick six is a great prop bet for us. And another one that's going to be awesome is going to be Jordan Hawkins as well for over 16.5 points or 24.5 points, rebounds, and assists for him as well. We'll show you guys why. So again, just comparing the lines that we're getting on prize picks and underdog, they have his points line set at 18.5. Now that's already a bet that we could potentially be going with the over as well. Again, looking at DraftKings Sportsbook, they have his points line set at minus 175 to get over 20 points. And so again, that line that we are getting on pick six is extremely appealing. Now I do want to warn you guys that the Pelicans are on three. And I think somewhat that Jordan Hawkins has kind of proven that he probably shouldn't be playing at this level. At the same time, he is coming in off of a poor game. So they might just run him out another game. So he has gotten this over in two out of three games, at least the over on pick six. And last game still played 30 minutes, still had eight shot attempts, just was not shooting the basketball well. I think that's pretty evident by him going three for six from the free throw line. And so I do think that's a good over bet. And then that's kind of it for the Pelicans. We are getting some more prop bets in this game. Uh, we got Missy here where for a big, his line being at 4.5 rebounds is definitely intriguing. But last game, he only played 15 minutes. Tough guess there. Uh, Zach ED as well. We're seeing massive lines for him. But again, we just don't know if he's going to play. I don't really want to mess around with that. Like the thing with Gigi Jackson is if he sits like kind of, oh, well, because then it doesn't hurt us, at least on underdog again. Hey, six, we want to confirm that he's active. For what it's worth, his over rebounds of eight is also set at minus 300. So that's also a good bet. Like if you guys are, like this is probably the best bet. Oh, I just noticed <laughs> this is well. So pick six has that seven and a half. They're definitely lower than the market today. We just need to make sure that these guys are active. So again, another good bet there. All right, we go ahead and jump into the next game. We got the Washington Wizards versus the Sacramento Kings, a two-point spread. So a close scoring game. We don't have to worry about potential blowout like we do with the Pelicans and Grizzlies game. Decently high scoring game, 178 and a half, not relative to the slate, but just in general for summer league. So another prop line difference that we are getting here that's pretty massive on this slate is with Washington. Okay. Looking at Alex Sar, who obviously last game, if you guys were paying attention to NBA summer league at all, he had a terrible game. He went, he'll pull it up. Oh, for 15. He has really not shot the basketball very well. Four for 14, four for 12. So not very well. At the same time, he could potentially have a brawny game as well, where brawny have been pretty bad. And you just kind of need to go out and have a good game. I could see that happening with SAR today. But what we're going to notice is that his points line is set at 12.5 on all the um, prize based and underdog on pick six. It's at 10. That's a massive edge that we are getting there. And so this is another potential opportunity for us to run out of middle. And he is someone that has not looked great. So I do expect him to still play. 
we do have that concern that he could potentially sit as well, but I don't think we're too concerned about it. Now, one player that has looked good is uh, Bub Carrington. He's listed as Bub on prize picks. Underdog, it's, it's slightly different, whatever. Again, getting a slight prop line difference with Bub, more so in his points rebounds. Uh, underdog has it at 26. Pick six has it at 25.5. Now, Bub has been playing heavy minutes. We'd love to see that 30 plus minutes. Uh, last two games, 19 and 16 shot attempts. So love that there from him. That should lead to a little bit of predictability there for him. Again, he's a heavy favorite to get over 15 points on drafting sportsbook minus 230 there. So that again, suggests that we are getting a pretty big edge on him. And like guys, if he is going to be shooting the ball 16 plus times, like, yeah, he should be able to get over 15.5 points. He's been able to do that every single game thus far as well. I don't, I don't really get this, this line. It's kind of a strange one. Are they trying to trap us into that? That's kind of my first thought when I see a line that seems to be this bad on paper, seems to be this obvious as a good bet. I'm I'm kind of worried about that, honestly, but I think we're okay with that. And for what's worth, going back to Saar real quick, he is minus 300 to get over 10 points on DraftKings Sportsbook again. So seemingly a massive edge for us there as well. All right, so jumping into the Kings, we have been, again, seeing some pretty heavy minutes from the Kings, which we like. Now, Keon Ellis is coming in off of a terrible game. I think that is something to monitor five turnovers, eight personal fouls as well. He is someone that when I look at that, to me, it kind of screams, all right, he is due to have a better game this game, just coming in off of that massive game. Not massive game, a terrible game. So it wouldn't be surprising to see him potentially have a massive game this game. Now he is someone that, again, looking at the lines that we're getting, minus 300 to get over 15 points. And so that tells me that his line should probably be closer to like 17 or yeah, probably just 17. So I'm a little bit shocked at the line that we're getting for him points wise as well. Like we are getting a decent edge there at 16.5. And then again, just comparing that to pick six, pick six is actually a little bit higher there. So, you know, if you guys don't like that line, just bet the under there. But I think the over bet on pick six or prize picks is probably the route I would want to go there. Now we are getting more prop bets here. I don't want to mess with Boogie Ellis there. Mason Jones is someone that, you know, hasn't been terrible. Uh, we saw the other Jones go off in the last game. I just, I don't really want to mess with those two too much. Um, it seemed like the other Jones just had a better game, got a little bit hotter with the basketball, so they stuck with him a little bit more. Now that's going to conclude where we are getting prop bets currently on DraftKings Sportsbook to, you know, better gauge whether uh, lines are good or not. So from this point on, we're just going to be kind of doing what we would normally do, which is just breaking it down normally, trying to predict who's going to play, how many minutes people are going to get. And we look at this next game, we got Orlando versus Brooklyn, and we're going to see three and a half point spread. So a close game, don't have to worry about blowout, decently high scoring game as well. The concern that I have is that they are coming in on a back end of a back to back. And I know they're young, and I know it's the summer league, but are they going to potentially try to limit some minutes here? That's the question. Maybe Silva, who is someone that, you know, has been playing extremely well. And that's kind of been disrespected by the lines that we have been getting. You know, he's someone that maybe could potentially sit. He has looked good thus far. Uh, at the same time, do they want to continue to get him run? We'll, we'll have to see. You know, I know mine is overs here. At the same time, it probably would feel like we're forcing it a little bit. And same thing with Jet Howard. Jet Howard, we're looking at his lines. His lines just seem to be correct for me. Now, he's still getting the shot attempts up, but he's not someone I would touch like PRA-wise because we do see his production is very much heavy on his points total. So if you're betting on him, you'd want to do his over or his points whether that be over and under. Again, I just don't really want to target this this game too much. And then we look at Brooklyn as well. So Brooklyn is 2-1 and one currently. They have Wilson, who's had two good games and one kind of lackluster game. Uh, but we're going to see that, for the most part, a lot of the Brooklyn Nets players have been getting heavy minutes. Clowney, Clowney has been getting 20-plus minutes. Gilliard, around 30 minutes. Wilson, around 30 minutes as well. And I think looking at Wilson's game log kind of paints the picture pretty well. We can see he has been getting 14-plus shot attempts up. Uh, and so just in one of the games, he had a cold night shooting and you wouldn't really say that it was a bad night either. It was just a couple more buckets and maybe a, some trips to the free throw line as well, like zero free throws in that game. Then we see the line for his points and we could see that we maybe are gaining a slight edge there at the same time. If we're betting on him to get over 18.5 points, um, now, I don't mind the idea of doing his PRA as well. You know, again, if I had to choose, I probably would go with his over there. So from there, we look at the prop bets that we're getting for Brooklyn. It is just Jalen Martin here. Uh, and we look at his lines, his lines. I feel like they're correct. 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 24 minutes, not shooting a lot as well in those games. Uh, so I would say that the line that we're getting on him is correct. Now, is he someone that could potentially see a little bit more run in this game if they choose to sit someone? Yeah, I think that does make sense. But at the same time, again, probably feels like we're forcing it. So again, probably don't need to go too crazy there. Now we jump into the next game. We got the Lakers versus the Clippers or Cavaliers. Sorry, six and a half point favorites are the Cavs in this game. 
178 and a half is the over and under. And the biggest question mark is whether Dalton Connect is going to play in this game. Earlier on today, I was really shocked because we were getting Connect at 17 and a half points. If you guys watched yesterday's video, you saw those lines were at like 19, 18 and a half on prize picks and underdog. That was one that I jumped on just on underdog because if he plays, that's the big question. If he plays, that seems to be a big edge. And the fact that he sat out yesterday probably points to him playing today. And if he gets 30 plus minutes again, shooting the basketball around 19 times, like you know, over the 17 and a half points, I was happy to bet on. The biggest question now is like, what do we do at 19.5 points? The question, I don't really know. I don't really like seeing those big line bumps. And what you guys will notice is that we're not getting any lines from on prize pace as well. They're maybe assuming that he's going to sit or they just don't want to give us a line if he does play. Uh, because obviously that would pro project differently for everyone there. Like Castleton, who we look at his lines, they, they seem to be correct. I'm a little bit shocked that last night he did not play a little bit more minutes, uh, just given the fact that Connect was out only 24 minutes in that game, and that game was close. I do think there's the potential that he could sit in this game as well. And then the biggest question mark is what do we do with Bronny now? Coming in off of a good game, I personally think we, we don't mess with him. I would actually argue that, all right, we should probably bet he betting the unders now he had his one good game only one rebound in that game and so on pick six you can see his points line is set at 8.5 prize picks does have it at eight underdog hover has that 7.5 so like uh probably just not targeting that one but i did think that was interesting all right jumping in now to the clippers versus the jazz this is another spot where we are getting just big prop line differences between prize picks underdog and then pick six and so this is where the lines are going to be pretty chalky i would assume uh on pick six today which with it being the night game as well i don't know if that could create an edge here but i'll show you guys here so these two right here points rebounds and assists i, I don't really honestly i don't want to show this because this is a big edge uh looking at though guys we got collier at 21.5 and then 19.5 as well so this tells us we have a decent opportunity to bet the unders on prize picks and underdog here and then just bet the overs on pick six. That should, again, that, that just should not be happening. That's crazy that it is. They're off by three. They are off by three. And now, yes, these two are on the same team. So if you do use this, you have to find another prop at an underdog, which we will be able to do. Like, that's fine. I already listed a few <laughs> decent ones, but just a massive edge there, especially potential for middling as well. That's just huge. Now, I had mentioned, I think Collier has looked good at the same time hasn't really been producing it's it's just one of those things where he's not getting enough shot attempts maybe again a little bit discouraged early with some misses uh 0 for 3 0 for 4 from 3 and, and maybe that's where his, it just kind of has went for him uh six points nine points 12 points so kind of been getting worse as well um again though we just shouldn't begin that middle i probably am a little bit more excited to bet the under on underdog for him where here i i think the middle actually just makes a ton of sense and actually i'm more excited to bet the over on pick six here but again, that's just a massive prop line difference. That should not be happening. And I would argue Taylor Hendricks lines are probably a little bit too low as well, but we're not like getting a massive edge like I just pointed out in terms of middling opportunities as well. Taylor, Taylor Hendricks had a very good game last game, 23 points, nine rebounds. I look at his first two games prior to that, not good games. I would see, say what we saw last game from him is probably what we would be expecting or had expecting. Uh, prior to his two terrible games so i do think this is more of the norm obviously we don't expect him to go nine for ten though again and for the clippers i don't believe we're getting any prop bets for jordan miller yeah we're, we're not and he has been someone that has been scoring a decent amount for them uh, it, it makes sense why we're not he has been a walking bucket for them he's played extremely well the only player that we are getting a prop bet for lines for is kobe brown kobe brown has played heavy minutes uh, two out of three games shot the basketball a decent amount scoring a lot but to me his lines are probably correct now he's a little bit of a middling opportunity again between prize picks and, and pick six or sorry underdog and pick six his pra on pick six is at 21.5 underdog and prize picks at 23.5 so maybe just a potential to run out of middle in that game in general that is a big edge again that we have middling wise but we don't want to go too crazy with that and and the reason that is guys especially for pick six purposes is because that is a late night game you would have yourself extremely constrained as to what you can do with options if one of those guys two of those guys or three of those guys sit out you could be sol then that is a constraint that that has so like it is a big edge I wouldn't want to play three of them in a lineup just in case someone does sit. And then we move on into the last game on tonight's slate. And that's probably the most interesting one. Timberwolves versus the Rockets. So you got Shannon playing well. Dillingham starting to play well. You got Reed Shepard and Cam Whitmore. Highest scoring game as well. Close game as well. Now just looking at, I think a lot of people remember from the first game for Dillingham. He was a huge letdown in terms of his points. Then came out and had a decent game uh, against Indy on the 14th. And then last game against Philly. Not, still not that good 
Uh, so interesting stuff there from him, but he is shooting the basketball a decent amount, 10 plus times in every single game thus far. Um, I think where we're getting value on him is if he does have a better day shooting. But for me, I think I'd rather just go with like his assist or his rebounds. But at the same time, I do expect him to have a better day shooting. So we could do PRA there. Probably feels like we're forcing it a little bit there with him. Then we have Shannon as well, who, you know, he's been playing good, look good thus far. The, the surprising thing was that in the last game, only five shot attempts. He's an aggressive player, 14, 11. I wonder if they gave him a message, be like, all right, don't shoot the basketball as much. We need to get some looks out of other players. And one of those other players might've been Knicks who shot the basketball 14 times in that game, had 22 points. Uh, potentially Miller ended up playing 30 minutes in that game uh, and then had 20 shot attempts. So it, it does feel like almost they stay away there. Just Minnesota's kind of spreading out a little bit there. And so probably don't want to roll with that. And then we have Cam Whitmore here as well. Okay, so confirmation that he is not playing for the rest of the summer league. That is actually pretty huge. He's been playing 30 plus minutes, obviously did not have a good game in his last game. That is pretty huge. What is that going to mean for Reed Shepard? Is that actually going to be a good thing or a bad thing for him? We saw last game still played pretty well. 16, 6 for 17, not bad. Uh, the assists were down. The rebounds were down as well. Not as high scoring of a game as well. And maybe that is due to Cam Whitmore having a poor game. Did that correlate with Reed Shepard not playing as well? And can he make up for that with someone else? It's tough to say for sure. I will say the lines that we are getting on him are pretty intriguing in terms of betting his over points, in terms of points, rebounds, and assists as well. I do like the overs, but I'd probably be more inclined to do the points because if he's still shooting the basketball 15 plus times and we know that Cam Whitmore is off the court, and he's soaking up that usage. That is intriguing to me. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and get into the bed of the days for today. And so, guys, literally, as I was doing this video, as I was going to do the bed of the day, I realized that the middles just got more extreme that we have potential for. So I want to point out Jordan Hawkins on prize picks is set at 19. His points pick six still has his line at 16 and a half because they can't change it. We are getting some big, big prop line differences today. This is a day in which we probably should be trying to middle between pick six and underdog. And so that's going to be my concentration because of those massive edges. They're up by two, by three. That should not be happening. And although we are getting seemingly good bets on prize picks and pick six, like Gigi Jackson over points, like Jordan Hawkins over points, like Alex Saar over points, that's why we're seeing them get bumped. And so I'm probably just going to be running out a bunch of middles today. And so obviously this, I'd be running out the exact opposite on pick six. There's going to be a bunch of variations that I'm going to be running out. Hopefully we, we do hit a lot of middles because again, this should not be happening. But that's going to be all for today's video, guys. Uh, wish I could actually give you more bets of the day. But again, the, literally the slight change as I was doing this video to the point where we should, that's the best approach to go with is attacking these middles. That's going to be all for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck. And as always, let's keep cashing.